Dr. Evelyn Geyser will discuss <clears throat> the great wizard of Oz, if Oz was the wind. <clears throat> Evelyn, in my opinion, is a great scientist. <clears throat> she makes, what is happening with me? <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Evelyn, <clears throat> what did they say? Paraphyton in the throat. Yes, Evelyn, specialty is paraphyton, although I do not mention that in your introduction. Instead, I mention that you are running a complex, highly acclaimed NSF long-term research program at FAU, and she makes it look easy. <clears throat> Maybe that's one of the reasons she's an endowed George Barley, eminent scholar, chair, and professor. Evelyn's dig talk is entitled, The Wizard of Wind. As we all know, storms can be both terrible and great. After all, look what it did to Dorothy's house. Lifted it from the foundations and crashed it right upon the Wicked Witch of the East who had been such a menace to the land of Oz. Well, journey with me, if you will, from the land of Oz to the land of the Everglades, and hopefully this picture is looking a bit like Kansas, helping you make that journey. <laughs> and consider for a moment, who is the Wicked Witch in our land who needs to have a house dropped upon her? Now, maybe you should keep some of your thoughts to yourselves. <laughs> but I bet one candidate that we can all agree on for the Wicked Witch of the Everglades is saltwater intrusion. Saltwater intrusion is driven in part by sea level rise, and now this is the very same factor that over the last 5,000 years allowed for the development of peat soils and this incredible array of ecosystems that we observe along the coastal gradient today but this rate is now escalating out of control from going from two and a half to over 20 millimeters a year in just one decade. And you know the story, this combines with decades of freshwater flow diversion into canals, dumping this freshwater to the sea instead of into the Everglades marshes, and that's accelerating this pace of saltwater intrusion saltwater intrusion, she is our wicked witch, relentlessly pedaling from the sea to the interior, bringing with her a basket of salt that she casts upon the prairie, hollering to the sawgrass, I'll get you my pretty and your root systems too. <laughs> Causing these thousands of years of peat soils developed underneath the sawgrass marsh to collapse, and that carbon mobilizes then into the water and into the atmosphere to be lost from the ecosystem. And so at a time when we most need processes that build elevation, we're losing them, and that makes it even tougher for these salt-tolerant coastal communities like mangrove forests to move inland and build elevation there. So indeed, saltwater intrusion is our wicked witch. Well, tropical storms might just do her in. Just like Kansas is no stranger to tornadoes, the Everglades is no stranger to hurricanes. And these are just the tracks that have moved through Florida over um, since the beginning of the, the 20th century. And we've had the wonderful opportunity to study the legacies of two of these storms, Hurricanes Wilma and Hurricane and, and Irma, that, um, was, uh, that we've been able to study as a result of the long-term data sets, as well as wonderful collaborations with, with many of you in the room, enabled by our National Science Foundation-funded 
uh, Florida Coastal Everglades Long-Term Ecological Research Program. And so let's start with the, what we've learned about the impacts of Hurricane Wilma in this ecosystem, as you know. It blew through in October of 2005 as a Category 3 storm driving right into the western coast of the Everglades. And it had 120 mile an hour winds, and it brought with it an eight foot storm surge. And that storm surge dropped something upon those mangrove forests, not Dorothy's house, but three to five centimeters of mud that it had scooped up and delivered into these mangrove forests. And we can see that jump here in these sediment elevation table data showing that the forest had been accreting peat soils at a rate equivalent to the long-term rate of sea level rise. But then in one day, we gain equivalent to what it would take the forest 50 years to build on its own. And that is such an important process, this big jump in elevation for maintaining these coastal marshes as sea level is now accelerating so fast. And the soil that was dumped in from the Gulf of, or the sediment dumped in from the Gulf of Mexico was full of phosphorus. The phosphorus concentrations were about three times that of the peat soils. And so that really helped the little seedlings that were regrowing after the canopy had been blown away in the forest. Um, to, to regrow, uh, you know, they're rooted down in that wonderful phosphorus rich soil. And we can see that rapid recovery here in these uh, data from our eddy covariance tower. That tower is located um, near the mouth of the Shark River that was so severely hit by the storm. And the tower is measuring rates of CO2 exchange with the atmosphere and the research that had been done on these uh, data prior to the storm had shown that this forest is indeed one of the most productive on the planet. It has really, if, uh, really rapid rates of, of um, sequestration of CO2 from, from the atmosphere. Well, Hurricane Wilma came in and it blew our flux tower down. But by the time we were able to establish a new tower out there, which was about a year later, the forest had regained almost this full capacity to sequester carbon again from the atmosphere. So this is showing that remarkable rate of recovery. And so the Hurricane Wilma story sort of goes like this, where the storm comes in and it blows all the leaves off the trees, creating these canopy gaps. But it's also delivering little mangrove propagules to the interior. And those propagules set up shop in that phosphorus rich, rich mud and they have that open canopy to then grow in. And so this event is really important in allowing the marsh to make that big leap forward into this ecotonal area that is so prone to collapse from saltwater intrusion. And so it seems as if from this Hurricane Wilma story that Hurricanes do confer some resilience in this ecosystem to saltwater intrusion by encouraging processes that build elevation rather than lose it. So can we make a declaration about the wicked witch of saltwater intrusion that perhaps, oops, she is morally, ethically, physically, spiritually, positively, absolutely, unequivocally and reliably dead? Well, we were actually able to test that with Hurricane Irma that blew through here as one of the biggest storms we've seen on record. And it had a similar trajectory to Hurricane Wilma. And it delivered 130 mile an hour winds and at this time a 10 foot storm surge. And that deposited once again, in some places, up to 10 centimeters of mud into the coastal forest. And that mud was once again full of phosphorus. So we would presume the onset of some of these very same processes that help the forest recover so quickly after Hurricane Wilma. But we saw something after the storm that we didn't see after Hurricane Wilma. 
And that was concentrations of dissolved organic carbon leaving this estuary at levels two to three orders of magnitude higher than anything that we had previously measured over a 20 year record of monthly monitoring. And so this massive efflux of organic carbon out of the estuary represents elevation loss somewhere, somewhere upstream. And we're concerned that that carbon is sourced from these marshes that are collapsing as a result of those decades of freshwater flow diversion, creating that rapid saltwater intrusion into these, into these marshes at that ecotone boundary. And so that's something that our program is really interested in studying. What is the source of this massive loss of carbon out of the ecosystem? Is it that thousands of years of peat below the uh, sawgrass marsh mobilized into the water column and then evacuating out the estuary? So it appears that this peat loss problem is, our, is a wicked problem in the Everglades. But the freshwater flow diversion component of saltwater intrusion is a wicked witch that we know how to kill. We know how to kill her through freshwater restoration. Ding dong, the witch is dead. Thank you. <laughs>